Hi guys, welcome back, or rather, well, kind of welcome back to Make It Last. We played this game before on the channel, but we played Make It Last, um, it was Make It Last colon something, while you can. Make It Last while you can. Um, but today, we're playing Make It Last, which is actually the previous entry in the Make It Last universe. Um, I didn't even realize this existed when I played the other one, Make It Last While You Can. And when I found out this existed, um, I decided um, I needed to play it. So, let's get back into it. There, there's my doppelganger again, and um, he's really embracing, embracing, embracing that fashion of the 90s, 80s, whatever. I mean, I dig it. I mean, I need some shirts like that, some clothing like that. I'd wear it. When Jordan was 12, his family moved from South Korea to a little town in the United States located in northern Idaho. When he was saying goodbye to his best friend before the move, Jordan kept thinking about how he wanted nothing more than to kiss the boy. Ooh, horny at 12. <laughs> Lock him up in horny jail. He realized that this intense these int that his intense feeling of friendship were mixed with an intense romantic crush. His realization had been confusing because he never knew that he could even have a crush on another boy. Upon this realization, he looked back on his life and knew that he just never felt the same way about girls. Girls? Yuck. He felt like he had broken some rule that everyone else knew, but no one ever filled him in on. When Harvey was 12, he was playing hide-and-seek with his sister. Harvey had decided to hide in his father's bedroom closet. Harvey had forgotten that there were rules at the start of the game. Stay outside. H what? Hiding in the house is off-limits? Why? What? What kind of game of hide-and-seek is this? You must stay in the neighborhood. Harvey had been s what kind of what kind of game do you play with your siblings hide and seek you can't hide in your own ha you can't hide in your own house what Harvey had been sitting on the floor to the closet when he noticed a stack of magazines on top of a box in the corner the box was labeled Martin's crap Harvey grabbed a magazine off the top of the stock the cover had a nearly naked woman Ugh, scandalous Harvey skimmed through the magazine. He felt grossed out by the time he got to the end. <laughs> Gay boy looks at, at at some naughty magazines of women. Gross. <laughs> I feel dis I need to go lay down now. <laughs> that ruined my day. I, I can't finish this hide and seek game. <laughs> I need to go be 12 and grossed out by uh, women's... Uh, women's naked bodies. Ugh. He briefly questioned if he if wanting to see naked girls was normal, and if he was not normal because he knew that he wished that there had been men in that magazine. Horny jail. Harvey tossed the magazine back onto the stack and continued hiding. When Jordan was fourteen, he came out to his older brother Stephen. Stephen was supportive. He hugged Jordan, who had started crying during all of this, and told him that he would always be there for Jordan. Ooh, maybe those brothers can, um, kiss a little, like another game that we were recently playing that never actually showed the kiss. Still don't know what to say about that game. I haven't played it since, um, the third video that you guys have seen. Haven't played it since then. So again, I'm going to, but... Just, ugh, what a headache. <laughs> Jordan choked out a question through his tears. Uh, oh, okay, that's some fancy script right before this, um... Regular font. W what should I do? Steven paused. He understood what Jordan was afraid of immediately. He looked at Jordan and told him, If you don't want to come out to them, you don't have to. I'd like to say that mom and dad will be supportive, but he had trailed off. Jordan nodded. Aww, unsupportive parents. Aww. When Harvey was 14, he was helping his mother in the garden. His father came home from work and shook his head as he passed by the two of them. Harvey's mother glared at his father. 
Harvey asked why his mother, why his father was always upset with him. She put a gentle hand on to his and said that Harvey's father was traditional about how things should be. She followed it up by saying that there was nothing wrong with doing what makes you happy, as long as it doesn't harm other people. Harvey was confused. What if doing what makes you happy is like hardcore BDSM and that and you like whipping boys and making them bleed? But of course it's consensual. But it does hurt other people. <laughs> Hearing that from her made him happy. Later that night, Harvey asked his father what would make him happy. His father replied by telling him that he'd be happy if Harvey manned up. The following school year, Harvey signed up for the football team. Alright, just going ahead and abandoning our own dreams for our heterosexual father. Alright, fine. When we, we could have been the master gardener, okay? We could have had a, a show on the, what, TLC network maybe? I don't know. They put a lot of garbage on there. We could have had the best garden in America. When Jordan was 16, his mother was sitting down at the dinner table when he got home from school. His new index entry? Okay, you can stop floating across the screen. His mother spoke in a stern tone. Okay, well, I'll just attempt this. Hyun Jun, I found this while going through your room. Sitting in front of her was Jordan's diary. Jordan's stomach drop, is that his real name? Hyun Jun? Oh, no, what? Girl, you're actually reading his diary, though? I kind of just, like, um, just let that pass. <laughs> No, 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 Mom! You, you can't. You can't. You can't tell Dad. Everything about her physically seemed calm, but Jordan knew that she was furious. Her hands clasped and, and girl, are you actually be writing in your journal? So, I'm really, really gay, and <laughs> um, I really want to get railed by a, a dark-skinned dude later in life. You know, it's like, are you actually writing that down, or what? Her hand- Um, I will not- I will not tell your father, because there won't be any need for it! Her eyes started to tear up, but her voice was filled with rage. You will stop this at once! You will not do this to us after everything we have given you! We will burn this in the stove before your father gets home from work. And from this point forward, you will start going on regular dates with girls. Oh, honey, no, it's nasty! Eventually, you will get married and give us grandchildren. I know you wanted to start a family, but there's absolutely no way that's going to happen if you continue on this path that you're on. Jordan watched her open the wood stove and toss his diary into the fire. Every thought, every feeling, every drawing, every secret. Everything he had written down in his diary was disappearing in front of him. When Harvey was 16, he had become the star of the football team. Harvey no longer had time to help his mother in the garden. His mother asked him if he was happy with playing football. Harvey didn't answer at first. He thought about it. He wasn't sure. Harvey said he was happy. His father smiled more often. His father laughed with him. His father hugged him. His father loved him, finally. His mother smiled, but it didn't reach her eyes. His mother laughed, but it felt hollow. His mother hugged him, but there was like a massive void in between the two of them. His mother had always, and always would, deeply love him. Later that year, his mother got very sick. Ooh, that's a big fat F. On her deathbed, she told Harvey that there was no way to measure just how much she loved him. She told him that no matter what he does in his life, that she'd be proud of him. She told him that he owed it to himself to do what made him happy. She told him that when he finally found his happiness, to do what he could to make it last. Uh oh, they, they said it, they said the they said the name. She held Harvey in his sister's hands as she passed away peacefully. I don't want to be touching a dead person as they're dying. Harvey no longer helped his mother with her garden. Well girl, she's dead. Of course you didn't help her. When Jordan and Harvey were 19 years old, they were in college. They met they lived, they were horny together. Their lives changed from that point forward. It's been over 20 years since they started building their lives together. Alright. 20 years. So then, when did they be around 40? 
Ah, oh my lord. Oh no, 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 yeah, but wouldn't they be around 40 now? Um, when did they get their kids and make it last while well, you can? Do they have kids in this one? I don't know if they have... I don't know if they have their children in this one. But, I mean, if they're 40, they probably do, right? I don't know. Because those kids were... They didn't look that much older and make it last while you can. And those kids were like 10 or something. A faint vibrating noise came from far beside the table. No, nope, that is not what it said. From the far bedside table. Uh, wait, no, Jaggy is, um... I think Jaggy means, like, husband or boyfriend or lover or something. I don't even know how to check the index, girl. Is it... Oh, the index is here. Jaggy. In the context of Jordy use Jaggy in this game, so I do something like, yeah, darling, sweetheart. Okay. You re revised romanization of Korean converted from Hangul, whatever. Yeah, his birth name. His generational name is Hyun, his personal name is Jun. Alright. Alright, Jaggy, I think someone's trying to call you. Jordan reached over to wake him up. Using a little too much force, Jordan slapped his hand down onto the cold sheets. Huh? He rolled over. Jordan found that he was alone in the room. Jordan leaned over to see who was calling. Candace. He didn't want to make her wait any longer, so Jordan grabbed the phone and answered. Hey! No, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> I don't think the other game had any sort of voice clips like that. Um, I don't think it did. I don't remember it having it. Um, hey, what's going... what's going... Papa! Okay, so we do have children. Jordan realized that Candace didn't know who she was talking to. I think. Wait, is that not our children? <laughs> well... I've been trying to get a hold of you all morning. Cupcake, it's not... I was wondering if... Oh, okay. Okay, because they call them Daddy and Papa. I would... If I had children... With a man, I would just have them call me by my name. <laughs> like, I would not do this daddy and papa nonsense. I don't need that in my life. I really don't need that in my life. Um, Candace, it's daddy. Papa just left his phone in the room. Oh. He sat up in bed. Candace went quiet. What's going on, Cupcake? Jordan could hear her calm breathing on the other side of the phone. I, um... I was wondering if I can come by for dinner tonight. Of course, Cupcake. You know that's always okay with us. There was a muffled noise coming from her aunt. I know, I know. I'm asking right now. Also, Daddy, my boyfriend is going to come by. Huh? Wait, 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 <laughs> wait boyfriend? Did you say you have a- See ya! See ya tonight. Tell Papa to call me, please. Love you. Beep, beep, beep. The phone screen lit up with the call ended. Jordan glanced at the clock. It was fairly early in the morning. Jordan pulled himself out of bed, got dressed, and unplugged the phone from the charger. Jordan wasn't sure why Harvey had gotten up so early, but he thought that he might as well bring Harvey his phone. Why is my daughter getting around? Um, having a boyfriend already. How old is she? Where is she? Um... <laughs> Uh, Harvey? Huh, huh? Oh, hey, sweetie. I see you finally got up. Finally got up? It's still early. Speaking of, what are you doing up this early? Nothing. I was doing nothing. That sounds like horny. Something horny. Harvey slid something behind him underneath a magazine. What was that? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to make some co some coffee. Jordan tossed Harvey his phone. Oh, thanks. I was looking for that. Alright. I, I hate- I don't like this pose he's doing. What's he doing? 
<laughs> what are you doing, Jordan? <laughs> when Jordan got into the kitchen, he remembered that he needed to tell Harvey something. Oh yeah, before I forget, Candace called your phone. <laughs> Can we get an instant replay on that? What? No, we can't scroll back in this game. Oh no, that- oh wait, no, my mouse is dead. Or my mouse is off. Maybe we can scroll back? Oop, we can. Okay, let's do that again. <laughs> okay. Um, she did. And you answered it. What? Of course I answered it. What was I supposed to do? Ignore daughter calling? Good point, good point. So, did she say anything interesting? She told me to tell you that you should call her, and that she's coming over for dinner tonight. Oh yeah, that. That? I mean, that's cool, can't wait. What's going on with you? Harvey tried to hide a grin, he failed miserably. Well, I mean, it's right on his face, look at that. Nothing. He turned away quickly, unable to keep the smile off his face. He opened the fridge. He spoke in a very sing-songy voice. Did you want breakfast? I picked up your favorite. Harvey pulled out a bag from the fridge. Jinja? Guma wow! <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Jinja is... Okay, so that means really. Alright. Guma Wow is an informal. Okay, well, uh, well, fine. I thought one of those was like the food he got or something. He was distracting me with food, and it was working. Harvey walked over and kissed Jordan on the cheek while he handed him the bag. You're cute. I know. Oh, wait, are our children older now? Okay, that makes more sense. You know. That makes more sense. I guess that's our Candace. And she's way older now than she used to be. Back in Make It Last While well, You Can. Somehow that wasn't clicking. I thought she was maybe at a friend's house or something. And she was coming over. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, they took their places at the dining table and started having breakfast together. Oh, I was going to say something before you brought up food. What was it? Was it about sweet treats? What? N no. No limits? No limits? Like, during, you know what? Uh, horny jail. Nope. What What else could that even be referring to? Uh, how much you love me? I'm sure someone in the comment section will, be, will tell me exactly what it was referring to. And I'll be like, well, I don't care. I'm playing a Yaoi game. It always refers to that. <laughs> Well, I guess this isn't technically an alley game, but whatever. No. Harvey looks slightly hurt. I mean, yeah, that too, but that wasn't what I was going to say earlier. I feel like it's their anniversary or something. And that's why Harvey was being secretive about something earlier, and Jordan's, like, forgotten. Oh, well, I'm out of ideas. It'll come to me. Anyway, thank you for breakfast, Joggy. It was no problem. I was out already, so I figured, why not, you know? I was having such a hard time waking up this morning. I barely even reacted to... Wait. Candace has a boyfriend! Jordan, with his great timing, yelled that right when Harvey had started taking a drink. Harvey choked and coughed up some onto his arm. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Oh wait, they have shirts in that picture in the background that says No Limits. What is that? <laughs> Ugh. Ew, and they have like a picture of themselves kissing on the wall next to it. Ew! Dude, why are you gonna put that up in your own home? Ugh, that's nasty. I would never do that. I would never have a picture of me and my husband kissing. That's just, like, just gross, dude. It's like, you're not gonna make out right in front of you know, people, right? I mean, you wouldn't do that, right? So why are you gonna put up a picture in your home of you making out? 
And also, who took the picture? Gross. Like, ugh. There's, just, there's so many questions that pop up from that. And it's like, I don't, I don't like it. Like, who took the picture? I don't know, but it's nasty. Um, she has a boyfriend? Who is he? She didn't say, but he's coming to dinner tonight. I guess we'll find out then. Candace, this better not ruin the plan. Also, why she gotta have a boyfriend? Why not a a, a cool uh, girlfriend? Why couldn't why couldn't we raise a lesbian? Ugh. Sorry, I didn't hear that. What'd you say, Joggy? I just don't like it. I just don't support heterosexuals. I said I hope he's a good a good guy. She deserves it. Jordan didn't hear what Harvey had said, but he was pretty sure it, was, it wasn't that. I'm 99% sure it's their anniversary. Harvey pushed his chair away from the table. I like that table, though. That's a nice table. I'd like a table like that. I'm going to run some errands. Did you need anything? Oh, wait, that was Harvey talking. Whatever. Didn't you go out earlier? Yeah, but a couple of places I needed to go weren't open yet. It's my fault for not checking their hours beforehand. So did you need anything? I mean, if you're going out, there's some stuff at the grocery store you could pick up for dinner tonight. Are you sure you want to cook? You always do. I can do it tonight instead. No thanks. Plus, I don't want you burning my kitchen down again. Ah, oh, come on. That was over 20 years ago. I got evicted. All part of my master plan. I got to move out of my cruddy apartment and find a new place with you. Oh my, no. Harvey, no. Stop it. He wiggled his eyebrows at Jordan. <laughs> oh, his goofy expression got Jordan. Got to Jordan and they both broke into laughter. It's okay. I don't mind cooking tonight. God, shut up. I'm trying to be a romantic for you on our anniversary. Okay, you cook 300 and... 55 days out of the year, and I cook the one that a day, okay? <laughs> there are 356 days in a year, right? Oh, 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 I hope so. Otherwise, I'm acting like an idiot out here. Jordan leaned over and gave Henry a quick kiss on the cheek. Jordan had picked up and put their plates into the sink as Harvey walked towards the bathroom to get ready to leave. Jordan shouted to Harvey while he searched the cupboards. What are you in the mood for dinner? Harvey was brushing his teeth. Ew, so you haven't brushed your teeth yet? Girl, that's the first thing you should do when you get up. And his voice was muffled when he yelled back. Your chicken Alfredo. I've been craving it. Sounds good. And dessert? Harvey entered the kitchen. Sweetie, you're the dessert guru. Anything you come up with will be perfect. Giorno is not exactly sure what made him think of it right then, but something came to mind. How about Esther's pie recipe? That is an absolutely perfect idea. You don't even know. Alright, I need to write down a grocery list for you. Jordan remembered seeing a notepad somewhere around the living room. Where should Jordan look for the notebook? Um... Well, we could snoop around a bit, and we love to snoop. We love to snoop. One of the magazines. Jordan moved the magazines. Oh, there it is. Ah. As soon as he picked it up, Harvey grabbed it out of Jordan's hands. What the? What was that for? Uh, if you're cooking dinner and baking pies later, you shouldn't tire your hands out with writing. Go ahead and tell me what you need, and I'll write it down for you. I don't understand you sometimes. He grinned at me, but I could tell he was nervous about something. Jordan, please, just let me write the list down. There was something in the tone of Harvey's voice when he said Jordan's name like that. Jordan felt compelled to listen, and Harvey knew it. Jordan listed off everything that he could think. When they finished, Harvey put the notepad back into his back pocket. Harvey reached out for Jordan's hand. Harvey pulled Jordan closer to him. Harvey pressed his forehead against Jordan's, and they both closed their eyes for a short moment. Harvey let out a happy sigh. Jordan noticed the peppermint smell on his breath. Harvey planted a brief and sweet kiss onto Jordan's lips before he pulled away. 
Harvey grabbed his car keys and said a quick goodbye to Jordan as he left. Jordan stood near the window and watched Harvey get into his car and drive off. He's acting so weird today. Um, Jordan sighed and shook his head. Who knows what he's up to? Jordan's phone rang. He half expected Harvey to be calling about forgetting something, but it was actually Jordan's brother, Steven, calling. But, oh, okay. For a second I thought it was like, yes, it's your boy. <laughs> but that is not what it says. <laughs> that is not what it says. Yo, yo, basio. Yo, basio. That's kind of like a nungasayo. That's probably not how you say it either. Jordan and Steven talked regularly on the phone. They talked about their families, their jobs, and anything else that was happening in their lives. Bap, bap, male guy is so. While talking on the phone with Steven, Jordan walked around the house and cleaned up a bit. Jordan rinsed out some mugs that were sitting out and put them in the dishwasher. He cleaned up some of the magazines that had been sitting out at the coffee table for a few days. Jordan found Harvey's coat hanging on a doorknob to the hallway closet. He picked it up and took it into the bedroom. He opened the bedroom closet. He balanced the phone between his shoulder and ear while he reached for a coat hanger. When he was hanging the coat onto the rack, he nudged the shelf up above. A loose box started to slide towards Jordan. Ah! <laughs> what? Sis, why was that so loud? Oh my god. Girl. You, f you found- you saw a little spider? Okay, where are your balls? He jumped out of the way of the box and there was stuff everywhere. A box fell on him? I don't even remember what happened. God. Guachana! Alright, so wait, Steven. Oh, whatever. He's probably just like, what the F. Steven had overheard the crashing noise over the phone and asked Jordan if he was okay. Oh, girl, they cannot be speaking entirely in Korean. <laughs> non Guachana! Non Jium Guayade! Okay, well, let's try to open up our reference index. Bap Manga Sayo, have you eaten Guanachana? <laughs> Guanachana translates to it's okay. Nam na jim gawadi na ji gum gayad gayadwai is translated to I have to go now. Oh my god. Okay, I don't I don't this means I have to go now. I don't know what the first part of the sentence said anymore. Oh no, I think it means it's okay. Jordan told him that he was fine, but he had to go. Okay, I didn't even have to do that. I didn't even have to go in the little index. <laughs> Jordan kneeled down and started picking up the contents from the box. This was a box full of stuff from when Harvey and Jordan had gone to college. It was filled with knickknacks from their apartments, photos, and a couple of books. Aww. Ew, his... I don't, I don't like Jordan's hair there, though. Jordan was putting things back into the box when he picked up one of the photos. It was taking the day that Harvey and Jordan had met. I remember back in Make It Last While You Can, his hair, Jordan's hair back in the past, was not that. It was something much better than that. Please, just give me a chance at this. I can do this, I'll prove it to you. If I fail, I'll... I'll quit. I promise. Dad, please? He hung up on me. My eyes welled up, but I wiped them with my sleeve. I needed to hold myself together. Ding. I turned around and grabbed a rack of cupcakes out of the oven. I set them next to the other ones. The following morning, I stood at a table in front of Moirai Community College. The table was filled with all of the baked goods that I had spent the previous night perfecting. Oh wait, you know what? Is Make It Last While You Can retconned? 
because are they saying they met in college? Because I know they met in high school back in Make It Last While You Can. I know they did. Yeah, I think the sequel retconned some stuff. Interesting. I don't know, unless I misunderstood something. My specialty was cupcakes. The table next to mine was covered in different kinds of pies. Okay, hello, redheads. They were being sold by my literature professor, Mrs. Brooks, and her daughter. Jordan, your cupcakes simply just look amazing. I can tell you put a lot of effort into this. I blushed a little. I had been preparing for this bake sale for a while now. It needed to go perfectly. Thanks, Mrs. Brooks. What do you call them? Her Professor Brooks? Please, we're not in the class, Bubula. Just call me Esther. Esther. Esther's daughter had been reading To Kill a Mockingbird from her seat. She looked up and rolled her eyes. Sure, Esther. Charlotte, I wasn't saying that to you, was I? Okay, don't come back that snappy. No, sorry, Mom. Charlotte looked down at her feet and looked defeated. But when her mom turned away, Charlotte caught my eye and flashed a grin at me. Jordan, I don't think you've met my daughter. This is Charlotte. She's a freshman in high school. And Charlotte, this is Jordan. He's a student in my literature class. Pleased to meet you, Charlotte. That's a really pretty name. Thanks, I guess. I didn't pick it out or anything. Esther tapped on the table. No, she's being... Uh, no, I like her so far. <laughs> Don't tap at her. Charlotte. Nice to meet you, too. Your cupcakes look delicious. I picked up one of the cupcakes in the back and handed it to her. Wait, like, really? Righteous? Charlotte grabbed the cupcake out of my hand with a quick thank you before eating it up. Mrs. Brooks, I mean, Esther, did you want one? She smiled at me while she turned her own table. Only if you agree to a slice of pie. Consider it, consider it a trade. Mom's pies are totally primo. Charlotte nibbled on some of the remaining cupcake left on the wrapper. Esther and I handed each other our desserts. We each took a bite and mused about how good they were. I'll give you my recipe. It was my mother's, but I made some alterations to it over the years. I nodded. I was grateful for her kindness. The bake sale was off to a slow start. Not many people were craving sweets first thing in the morning. Charlotte had gone back to reading. Esther had a stack of crosswords to work on, and I had completely forgotten to bring anything. I had been too excited for this event that I forgot that it wouldn't be bustling with business from open to close. So I sat. I appreciated the little songs that the birds sang. I appreciated the breeze of the wind. I appreciated the smiles on strangers' faces as they passed by each other. Off in the distance, a car slid around a corner into the parking lot next to us. It interrupted the little things that I was appreciating. We could hear a loud group of guys excitedly shouting to each other in the car. The car crookedly parked into a nearby space and five guys piled out of the car. One of them had caught my eye. Ooh, you like those dark skinned men? Uh, Who are they? Jocks? <laughs> uh, what's wrong with that? Charlotte, you have never even met these young men. Okay, she didn't call them the N-word. <laughs> like, calm down. All she said was jocks. Jocks are jocks. This one guy named Jason bullies Howard all the time at school. I glanced over to the group. They were standing around they were standing around their car. The one who had caught my eye glanced over in our direction. He pointed at her tables. Who's Howard? No one. Like, it doesn't matter. Charlotte's face turned red. She hid behind her book. The five guys who had noticed the bake sale were making their ways over to the various stands. 
They continued joking and yelling to each other as they made their way through the stands. I couldn't help but watch the group. There wasn't much else to look at. Gay. Oh my god, there he is. Oh my god. And honey, how are you going to be wearing that shirt and call yourself a jock? I don't think so. Yeah, and... They definitely met in high school back in the last one, because he got injured back in a high school game, I remember. Right? Harvey got injured in a high school game of football. And it was a whole big thing. They retconned the game. The story, I think. That wasn't college that he got injured in, was it? I don't think it was. Then he turned from his friends and our eyes locked for a brief moment. He smiled. Like, we could tell you were gay from a, from a mile off, Harvey. My face heated up so quickly that I was sure that if I wanted to, I could set the world on fire. My arms darted away to find something, anything else. But the way that his cheerful smile reached his big brown eyes was etched into my memory. Attractive man, excuse me. He had walked up to my table. How much are the cupcakes? Um, they're 75 cents each. I avoided eye contact with the man as he thought about the price. He had noticed how much I was blushing. I could see Esther smile at me from her table. Did she know? She knows you deserve to be in horny jail. I'd like to buy one. His hand reached into his pocket and handed me a dollar. Keep the change. Thank you, that's really kind of you. He gave me another smile. It was interrupted by his friends rushing up to him. Two bumped into his shoulders, one stood a couple feet away, and the last one jumped onto his back. Ew. He was obviously not expecting this. His body lurched forward under the force and he lost his footing. Is he gonna crash into the cupcake table? It felt like slow motion as he tumbled toward me, toward the table. The man looked surprised and scared. Esther reached out. Charlotte glanced over a book with a look of horror on her face. I stood there, unable to move. And then suddenly everything sped back up. His body crashed through my table, breaking the legs. Cupcakes flew everywhere. His body laid in the center of the mess. His friends had backed up. They were speechless. The man who had jumped onto his back started to run to the car. The others followed, leaving their friend behind. The engine revved, what? And they literally just completely left without him? What kind of friends are these men? The engine revved and they drove off without a second thought. Esther and Charlotte rushed to help up the man who had fallen through my table. But I was having trouble thinking. I wasn't there. I was stuck in the memory of the phone call from last night. I told him I'd quit. I thought there was no possible way I could fail. I thought that this would be a way to get my name out there. What? A name out there for what? Is he trying to be a baker? Um, uh, and is this, and this little bake sale is his one opportunity to make it big? I don't, I don't know about all that. And now everything laid on the ground around me. Everything was ruined. Hey, at least you have a sexy man on top of you. It's, it's the silver lining. And he was laying in the middle of the chaos. <laughs> I like his narrowed eyes. Sir, are you okay? Does it hurt anywhere? The man pulled himself up into a sitting position. He was covered in so much frosting. He reached over to rub his shoulder. I'm... I'm fine. I... He glanced around at the cupcakes all over the ground and let out a gasp. No. Oh, for the love of... Oh, no. He rushed to his feet and leaned over to me. I still hadn't moved since he gave me his money for the cupcakes that he bought. I'm so, so sorry. I'm so, 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 so sorry. He frantically looked around. I can fix this. I, I can. I will. I... It's ruined now. Don't bother. My voice sounded emotionless to my own ears. The man dropped down to his knees and looked at all the cupcakes around him. Slowly he reached up to his nose and wiped frosting onto his finger. He licked the frosting off his finger. The cupcake that he bought had smushed itself against the concrete. 
He reached out for it and unpeeled the wrapper. He took a bite from the bottom. Ew. I felt like I was suddenly awake. This is delicious. What are you doing? That was on the ground. Not the bottom of it. And I paid for this one. I don't want to waste it. He got up to his feet and locked eyes with me. What's your name? Uh, it's Jordan. My face started to heat up. If I would have come up earlier and bought everything, how much would it have cost? I don't know, a hundred dollars? You made that many cupcakes? You're selling them at 75 cents, that's like 125 cupcakes almost, or something. He did some quick mental math and then pulled out his wallet. I don't have that much on me. I'll be right back. Please, Jordan, please wait here. There was something about the way he said my name. There's something about the way he said please that I felt compelled. Ooh, as soon as an attractive man tells you what to do, you're just instantly in submissive mode. Oh, you're nasty. I nodded and he ran down the sidewalk. Little sub. I hadn't noticed that Charlotte had come up with some bags to help clean up the mess. Esther, Charlotte, and I cleaned up everything. I pulled the broken table out of the way and soon my spot was completely empty. The man came sprinting back up to the bake sale area. He slowed down when he got closer to me. Ah, uh, you already finished? I was going to help clean up, sorry. He held out a hand to me. I stared at it confused. Here it is, $100, plus some extra for a tip. What? The, the money that you would have gone for selling your cupcakes. Oh, are you sure? Yeah, I'd feel like a total airhead if I couldn't help it. Thank you. I could tell Dad I, that I was successful. He didn't have to know the truth. That a sexy, dark-skinned man was lying on top of me at the bake sale. <laughs> he doesn't need to know the truth. But I wasn't sure if I wanted something that I didn't earn like this. The man must have noticed that I was still disappointed. Look, I know I'm not sure. Home Slice. Is there any way that I can help? Huh? Is there any way that I can help? Like, if we were to go out right now and buy everything we needed and start baking, can we come back? Um, you would lose out on a large section of the day. I think it'd be worth it. Wait, you mean, like, bake everything? Again? Everything? Why not? I don't have the money to get everything, you just got money. <laughs> what? We can use this money. And when what if I can't finish baking all this before it's over? What if I lose? We can't lose. We can't lose because heroes never lose. What? I... Um... Yeah, and get this guy's help. Hopefully keep him out of trouble and not knock over anyone else's tables. His face blushed. I'm so sorry about that. I think you should do it, honey. You really think so, Esther? You worked hard, but you didn't get the satisfaction of seeing anyone else enjoying it. I thought about it for a few seconds. Okay. Okay. Let's go bake a new batch. He gave me a smile that reached his eyes again. It made my knees feel weak. Yeah, you two can do it. Charlotte patted me on the back and gave me a thumbs up. Is this, this isn't when he sets Jordan's apartment on fire or whatever, is it? Because, like, how are they going to move in together when a stranger burns down your apartment? You're going to move in with them afterwards? Like, what? That can't be happening right now. Esther leaned in to give me a hug. You can do this, just have fun. She smiled at me as she stepped back. All right, Jordan, ready to go? I came to face to face with, I still don't know his name. I didn't catch your name. 
His face lit up briefly with a smile. My name is Harvey. It's nice to meet you, Jordan. The two of us walked over to my car. Harvey got into the passenger side. Harvey looked out of the window and spoke quietly. You have such a nice smile. Did you say something? Nah, let's book it. Gay. Gay. Gay alert. It didn't take us long to get to the vintage market. We didn't speak much on the way there. Harvey followed me around the store and helped me search for all of the ingredients needed. Uh, where do you live? I gave Harvey the address to my apartment building. No way. What? We live in the same building. We do? Yeah, that's so funny. I've never seen you around. I thought back to try and remember if I had seen Harvey around. I was lost in thought and hadn't realized that I stopped. That, that I stopped. Harvey hadn't either. <laughs> he bumped into me. His body felt so warm. Oop, horny. Uh, oof, I'm sorry. Why, is, why, why are they so horny? <laughs> he backed up and moved off to the side table. Oh my god, they're so horny! <laughs> they're too horny, oh my god, stop it! They're, they've been a whole, this whole game, it's, it's deceptive. The game doesn't look horny, but they're all so horny. <laughs> oh, you smell really nice. Huh? Did you say something? Oh, it was nothing, just talking to myself. <laughs> That's so weird. No. Like, honey, you can think those thoughts, but you can't whisper them under your breath. That's creepy. He glanced away quickly. We carried the groceries out of the store and loaded them back into the back of my car. We both got back into my car and made our way to the familiar apartment building. When we got into the building, Harvey balanced the bags into his arms and followed me to my apartment. Sorry about the mess. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> good one. I turned to him confused. Wait, you serious? This is nothing, dude. My place has five dudes living in it. The other dudes have girlfriends, yuck, coming and going. Yuck, coming? They throw parties all the time. It's a total wreck. He looked troubled, but quickly gained his composure. But it's cool, you know? I get to meet a lot of people, and there's always music to listen to. Harvey was starting to ramble. Well, if you ever want a break from the party zone, you can hang out over here. I wasn't sure how I offered that up so easily. I could feel the heat rise to my face. It's okay. I mean, it's okay. I prefer the party zone. Harvey looked like he wanted to take up my offer, but then he pushed past me to the groceries. We started getting out everything that we needed to bake the cupcakes. Harvey helped me by following my instructions. Everything went smoothly, and before we knew it, we had several batches ready to go into the oven. I started working on the frosting, and Harvey went around the counter to relax against the couch. How can you work on the frosting while the things are in the oven? What? Wow, this is much more comfortable than our couch upstairs. Yeah, I barely get a chance to relax and use it. Yeah, then again I sleep on our couch, so it's lost its cushion a long time ago. What does that mean? Why do you sleep on the couch? Five dudes, remember? I'm just lucky that I'm not sleeping in the bathtub. Nice teddy bear, by the way. He looked over to the he looked over the back of the couch into the kitchen. I quickly turned around to hide. Bootsy was um a gift. You named it. Yeah, sure. You sound confident in that. So you sleep on the couch? I tried to change the subject back to what had been. But what we had been talking about. I turned back around to see what he was resting against the bear. I do. It gets a little awkward when I just want to relax and the other guys bring their girlfriends over. I hadn't thought about that. How often does that happen? 
Uh, how many days are in a week? <laughs> it's fine. It's better than being at home with my dad. I can understand that. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm not completely away from my family yet. My dad is on my case to become a lawyer. A lawyer? Yeah, I mean, look at me. A lawyer? We both chuckled. Harvey kneeled on my couch and leaned against the counter. Wait, the couch is that close to the counter? Of the kitchen the kitchen counter? That's kind of weird. Uh, I don't know. I think you could convince me about a thing or two. I wasn't sure if it was intentional, but he raised his eyebrows slightly. Oh, not again! Okay, no, it's not giving us the zoom in. I would have liked it. I looked down quickly at the frosting that I was mixing. My face was starting to hurt from how much he was making me smile. Not even. I'm terrible. Harvey turned back around and leaned against the bear again. Okay, okay, I'll trust you on that. <laughs> I'll, tr I'll trust you that you're terrible. Neither of us said anything for a few minutes. My brain kept repeating the same question over and over. You mentioned your roommates, but do you ever bring back any girls? Even if it's just a hangout? Why did I ask him that? Why? Oh no. I shouldn't have asked him that. That was too personal. No, it wasn't. I looked down at the frosting, but I kept taking glances at him. He didn't respond right away. Girls. Girl, you know, me and girls don't get along. <laughs> uh, they're not really my thing, I guess you could say. Last time I saw a girl naked, I felt quite queasy. That was when I was 12 and in a closet. <laughs> my chest tightened a bit. Harvey whispered to himself. Why did I say that? I haven't said that to anyone before. He shook his head and glanced back up to me with a smile. How about you? I'm sure you're a regular Mr. Casanova with Bootsy here. I blushed. <laughs> I, um... I'm not really, um... He had scooted around on the couch to get a better look at me. I could have started a fire with how warm he made me feel. Horny. It's okay, I... The timer went off and interrupted him. He didn't continue. Harvey came back into the kitchen to help me pull the current batch out of the oven and put the next batch in. Ow, my hand is hurting for some reason. I wanted to ask Harvey what he was about to say before the timer went off. No. How... Wait, how's, the, how's this taste? Before he left the kitchen, again, I held out a spoon with some frosting on it. Instead of grabbing the spoon from me, he leaned over and licked it right up off, of the, off the spoon. Eh? Oh dear, that was cute. I'm going to die from how cute that was. Okay. I'm going to have to resist the urge to buy all these cupcakes when we get back to the bake sale. He made eye contact with me, and I felt like I could just melt right there in the middle of the kitchen. When the decorated, I mean, when the cupcakes were finished baking and being decorated, Harvey and I loaded them into the boxes and took them out to my car. We didn't live far from my campus, so it was still early in the afternoon by the time we got back to the bake sale. Alright guys, I think I actually will end this episode of Make It Last right here, but I thank you all for watching, and... I am looking forward to the next episode of this game, because it is a, such a cute game, and, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's really sweet to watch and play, um, it's very feel-good, and this one is hornier than the last one, I don't know, <laughs> that's just my opinion, I think everyone's really horny in this, but fine, if, if you disagree, that's fine, um, yeah, bye guys.